Welcome back to the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, where we dive deep into the latest health topics and explore natural solutions alongside conventional medicine. I'm Emma, and today we're tackling one of the most pressing health concerns of our time, childhood obesity. Specifically, we'll be discussing a controversial breakthrough, lyraglutide, an anti-obesity treatment that's redefining how we approach childhood obesity. That's right, Emma. Childhood obesity has become a global epidemic. By 2050, it's expected that one in four children will be classified as obese. This isn't just about weight. Obesity is linked to serious health issues like type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and metabolic syndrome. Traditional methods like diet and exercise have been the go-to solutions, but they don't always work for every child. That's why the medical community is turning to pharmacological interventions like liraglutide. Exactly. Liraglutide is a glucagon-like peptide 1, or GLP-1, receptor agonist. It was originally approved for adults with obesity or type 2 diabetes, but now it's being evaluated for younger populations, kids as young as 6 to 11 who struggle with weight loss despite lifestyle changes. Studies show it could be a game changer in childhood obesity management. The research is impressive. A comprehensive review of seven randomized controlled trials involving 547 children showed that liraglutide led to significant reductions in body weight and BMI. On average, these children lost about 2.13 kilograms, and their BMI dropped by 1.56 kilosquare. It's not just about the weight, either. Kids with type 2 diabetes saw a significant reduction in their HbA1c levels, which is a marker for blood sugar control. That's huge for kids who are at risk for or already dealing with diabetes. And the best part? Liraglutide appears to be well tolerated. The studies found no major differences in adverse events between those taking liraglutide and those on a placebo. This suggests that it's a relatively safe option for children who need pharmacological help managing their weight. With obesity on the rise, safe and effective treatments like liraglutide could become essential. But of course, Emma, we have to acknowledge that there are still questions about long-term safety, especially in children. While liraglutide seems safe in the short term, potential side effects like gastrointestinal issues or pancreatitis need to be closely monitored. There's also the concern that these medications could affect how children develop a relationship with food or even contribute to disordered eating patterns. That's a great point, Alex. And it brings us to another key consideration. Pharmacological treatments like liraglutide should be part of a broader, multifaceted approach to managing childhood obesity. We can't just rely on medication. Lifestyle changes like healthy eating, regular exercise, and behavioral therapy are critical components of long-term success. Medication can support these efforts, but it can't replace them. Exactly. Personalized treatment plans are crucial. Every child is different. And while some may respond well to liraglutide, Others might benefit more from lifestyle changes. That's why a comprehensive approach, which takes into account each child's unique needs and challenges, is so important. Absolutely. And as we look at newer pharmacological treatments, it's clear that GLP-1 receptor agonists like liraglutide and semaglutide are at the forefront. Semaglutide, for instance, has shown even greater weight loss results in adolescents up to 17.7 kilograms in some cases. These drugs are clearly changing the landscape of pediatric obesity management. Yes, semaglutide has been a game changer in its own right, showing even more impressive weight loss results than liraglutide. But let's not forget that obesity is a complex issue. It's not just about overeating or a lack of physical activity. There are genetic factors, hormonal imbalances, and even emotional and psychological components that all play a role. Exactly. And that's why we need to look at the bigger picture when it comes to managing obesity. It's a multifactorial condition that requires a personalized and comprehensive approach. Pharmacological treatments like liraglutide are just one piece of the puzzle. Speaking of genetics, some newer therapies are focusing specifically on genetic causes of obesity. For instance, treatments targeting leptin and melanocortin-4 receptors, MC4Rs, are showing promise for kids with rare genetic conditions like generalized lipodystrophy or bardet beetle syndrome. These conditions cause severe obesity that isn't responsive to traditional methods or even most pharmacological treatments. Right? Leptin is a hormone that signals satiety to the brain. Some kids with genetic conditions don't produce enough leptin, leading to uncontrollable hunger and weight gain. 
Leptin therapy is now being explored as a way to treat these rare cases of genetic obesity. It's just another example of how personalized medicine is evolving to meet the needs of different patients. And while these new therapies are exciting, there are still many challenges in the field of anti-obesity pharmacotherapy. The effectiveness of these medications can vary widely from one person to another. Some individuals experience substantial weight loss while others see minimal results. Plus, the long-term effects of these drugs are still not fully understood, and there are concerns about side effects like thyroid tumors, pancreatitis, and kidney problems. Cost is another major barrier, Alex. Many of these medications are expensive, and not all insurance plans cover them. That makes it difficult for some families to access the treatment their child might need. It also highlights the importance of combining these medications with lifestyle changes like diet and exercise, which are more affordable and can have long-lasting benefits. Absolutely. A comprehensive approach that includes both pharmacological and lifestyle interventions is the best way to manage obesity, particularly in children. And that brings us to another aspect, herbal remedies. Here at the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, we always explore natural alternatives that can complement conventional treatments. Yes, herbal remedies can play a role in obesity management too. For example, green tea extract has been shown to increase metabolic rate and enhance fat oxidation. It's rich in catechins like EGCG, which help reduce body fat but we need to be cautious with children. Green tea contains caffeine, which can cause issues like irritability and insomnia at high doses. Then there's Garcinia cambogia, which contains hydroxycitric acid, HCA. HCA is thought to inhibit fat production and suppress appetite, making it a popular weight management supplement. Although the research is mixed, some studies suggest it could provide modest weight loss benefits. Fenugreek is another great option. It contains soluble fiber, which helps increase feelings of fullness and may also improve glucose and lipid metabolism. This could be particularly beneficial for children with obesity and type 2 diabetes. But again, we need more research on the safety of medicinal amounts of fenugreek in children. Another herb to consider is Gymnema sylvestre. It's known for reducing sugar absorption and decreasing sugar cravings by blocking sweet taste receptors. This could be useful for kids who struggle with sugar consumption. However, we still need more research on its long-term effects, especially in children. And let's not forget about Rhodiola rosea. It enhances energy metabolism and can help improve physical performance, making it a great support for increased physical activity. However, just like with other herbal remedies, it's essential to consult with a healthcare provider before starting any new supplement regimen. Ashwagandha is another option. It's well known for helping manage stress-induced cravings and weight gain by reducing cortisol levels. Stress is a major factor in childhood obesity, and ashwagandha could be a useful tool in managing it. But again, we always recommend professional supervision when using herbs, especially with children. That's right, Alex. And parents should always consult with healthcare providers when considering any herbal or pharmacological treatments for their children. Monitoring progress and making adjustments as needed is critical to ensuring safe and effective treatment. Exactly. And it's important to involve the whole family in any lifestyle changes. Healthy eating, regular physical activity, and positive behavioral changes should be a family effort to ensure long-term success. It's all about creating an environment that supports a child's health journey. Absolutely. Childhood obesity is a complex issue and managing it requires a multifaceted approach. Liraglutide might be the latest breakthrough in pharmacological treatment, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. A comprehensive, personalized approach that includes lifestyle changes, medical treatments, and even herbal remedies can make a huge difference. Well said, Emma. Liraglutide is redefining anti-obesity treatment for children, but we need to keep exploring all options, both conventional and natural. It's all about finding the right balance for each child. Exactly. Thanks for joining us today on The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. If you're interested in learning more about childhood obesity, lyraglutide, or natural remedies that can support weight management, be sure to check out our full article for a deeper dive into the research. We hope you found today's episode helpful. Stay tuned for more insights into health and wellness on our next episode. Take care, everyone. And remember, holistic health is about supporting the body and mind.